In the last two episodes, we met Peter, a first-time farmer who's made the transition to regenerative agriculture. We discovered why he changed and what his experience has been like. Uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> In this episode, we test Peter's soils and we discuss his plans for the future of his farm. We've just taken this core and there are a few uh, features that are, are worth looking at. One is the colour of the core. It's quite a dark soil, uh, which isn't un uncommon. The little bit at the top here, where there's a lot of uh, organic matter, and you can see the little aggregates forming, is only about, say, 25 mils deep. Beyond that, it starts to get uh, more compacted. There's less organic matter and the soil particles are more closely packed together. And when we used our penetrometer, which has uh, a dial on it, we found that we could get it to 300 PSI uh, by putting pressure on it and forcing it in about that 25 millimetres. At about uh, maybe 50 millimetres, we found that we were up to 600 PSI. The interesting thing about that is that roots exert about 300 pounds per square inch pressure when they try to grow through the soil. So effectively they've got uh, 25 millimetres, two and a half centimetres of soil, of topsoil surface here where they can, can grow easily. And beyond that, they start to struggle. And rather than being able to force their way through the soil, they need to find a crack or a fissure and they'll, they can follow that. Beyond that, they can't grow. At 600 pounds per square inch, the roots just can't make their way through. We see a, a good aggregation and all the organic matter in that top 25 millimetres. By the time we're down to 50 millimetres, that's all petered out and we're just into flat packed soil particles, suggesting that the grass is only using this much of all of this alluvial soil uh, to grow in. There are some roots down the other end there's one there, but it's the only root there. So one root has been able to find its way down and, and it's fairly thin and not looking particularly vigorous. There is a lot of potential to improve the grass growth on this alluvial flat if we can find a way to get this organic matter and this soil structure uh, that comes from the organic matter and from the biology that, that cycles the organic matter. If we can get that to move down here, for instance, we've effectively doubled uh, the soil volume that we're using to grow our grass. And if we can get it down here, then we've multiplied it by four. So lots of potential there. I'm confident that even if we had like four, five, six months of dry weather, um, I'd still be able to maintain my 60. But I'm gonna try and get through this summer without any, well, I won't have any irrigation. Are you not using any supplements, mineral blocks or free choice minerals or any of those nothing, sorts of things? Yeah. I'm relying on the different grasses to bring up the different nutrients. You want to develop strong roots and you can only develop strong roots if you give it enough time to regenerate to get that photosynthesis happening, drawing down the carbon into the soil. And then the stronger the roots, the faster it regenerates because as soon as it's eaten off, the roots say, hey, hey, feed me and pushes up, you know, energy up into the, uh, to, to the, to the growth. The root systems of the grasses here are very, very shallow. So there's a lot to be done in developing this property and the, and the soils to get deeper roots, better access to minerals, better water retention, more carbon in the soil to produce healthier grasses, more nutritional grasses, which then translate into healthier beef, which gives us human beings a healthier product to live on. And basically that's our medicine. So we've tested your soil using core sampling and also some biological assessment. Based on the results of that, the soil is probably not quite where um, you want it to be. What do you think the next step would be? What approach would you take from here? Soil knowledge is, is also another area that I'm not, um, not an expert in and I'm gonna to have to take uh, advice from uh, people that um, have much more intimate knowledge of it than, than what I have. However, what I will say, I will very, very much favour going towards biological treatments um, to the soil. Uh, what we're doing already is the cattle, um, the dung and, and the cow pee and, and the saliva 
um, being regenerated back into the soil to help stimulate the biology. And you can see it already working very well because when you bring in the cattle into, an, into small areas, you get fairly intense natural fertilization by the cattle themselves. Multi-species diversity is extremely important because each uh, different variety, each different group of, of plants brings something different to the table. And also plant trees. I've planted probably around 350 trees now. will add to the, the overall diversity, the deeper roots, the communication that I understand that trees make with grasses and other plants um, uh, will add to the overall ecosystem.